Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cam and the video you're about to watch has been taken from our live stream over on the Toffee Blues YouTube channel with Jordan. We sat down, we spoke about a number of different topics including Wilfred Zaha, including Branislav Ivanovic and of course Richarlison. The little clip you're about to watch is me and Jordan talking about the Richarlison situation. We go over the quote that was put out there yesterday by Sport Witness and we give our opinions on whether we believe there's actually anything to be worried about with this situation or whether or not it's just a quote that Everton really really need to take as a wake up call you know and I, I really need to get our heads down in the time to though because we could be in um, danger of losing a player of Richardson's quality within the next couple of years if we don't massively improve this squad so I do hope you enjoyed the little clip uh, check out the Toffee Blues YouTube channel in the description below and check out the live stream as well it's a full live stream 50 minutes long you can check out us talking about all of the topics as well as this one in a little bit more depth Big big thanks for watching. If you enjoy it, please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like I said, check out the Toffee Blues in the description down below, and I'll see you. Anyway, soon. moving on then to probably the biggest story of the uh, of the stream, which we weren't even going to talk about an hour ago because it hadn't come out. But Richarlison has supposedly had an interview with Sport Witness, and I just want to say before we go into talking about this quote, this is a direct quote from the interview. I think it's being taken out of context, and I think it's being mistranslated. Um, because he says a certain phrase in it, which we'll go on to talk about in a second, that I just don't think he'd have said in that way anyway, because it doesn't make much sense for him to say it in that way. So apparently, um, Sport Pisa um, employed or asked somebody, a former Brazilian player, or somebody who played in one of the clubs which Charleston to play for over in Brazil, to sit down with the player and talk about Everton. He said a lot of complimentary things about Everton. He said a lot of complimentary things about his improvements and his achievements with Brazil. But he also said one quote that's been doing the rounds and got a, peep, a few people worried. And, I, and me and Jordan are going to talk about um, why I think, you know, it, it's understandable and there's not an awful lot to be worried about with it, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so the direct quote was, uh, I've evolved a lot here at Everton and now with Ancelotti, I will grow more. He asked me to, ha he asked me to hold on a little, aka stay on a little bit, um, but I'm, but it, it all depends. If a good proposal come in, we sit down and talk. But I'm, I think I can hold on for another season. Now, the reason I think this is being misinterpreted and taken massively out of context is because why would he come out and say, I think I can hold on for another season? He's not on the edge of a mountain. He's not being forced. He, two weeks ago, said about how he wants to be an Everton legend and how he wants to spend a lot of time with the, uh, the football club and he loves the fans and he loves the club. And we all know that. We all know that. Yeah, John says the original quote was from Globe at Esporte. There you go. Um, it's a quote from the player. So he has said something along these lines. Um, again, I think it's been taken out of context and I think it's been misinterpreted. I, for me, I, I literally, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised by it. This is a player coming out and saying, ultimately, I have ambitions to play at the highest level of football. And if Everton can't offer me that, then at some point in the future, I might have to move on. He also says, if a good proposal comes in, we sit down and talk. What we must remember, and it's hard to remember because there's a lot of emotion involved in the game. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a lot of emotion involved when you've got a player as good as Richarlison, who very clearly loves the club and who always gives it 110%. We have to sort of take that emotion away a little bit and sit down and think, football is a business. And with Richarlison saying, if a good proposal comes in, we sit down and talk, he's right in saying that. If Everton got a £150 million bid, £175 million bid for Richarlison, we would entertain it. Whether we like it or not, whether he's a you know a fantastic young player, whether we should be building a team around him, we should be building a team around him. And if someone comes in with anything under 120, I think we laugh it off. But if someone comes in with the 150 million, especially with financial fair play, we would entertain it. Because if he did leave the football club, that would be times by three or whatever it is. And we'd have nearly 500 million pounds to spend freely on improving the squad. And I'm not saying that we have to sell Richardson to improve the squad. We don't. But... It's silly to think that Everton could be given any offer for Richarlison and would go, no, not even entertaining it. He's our player, move on. We would entertain it. It's a business. Of course it is. Players come, players go. I've done a live stream with... Um... <clears throat> with Tom T. Logic a few months back uh, and he said something at the time I was like oh no don't want to listen to that I don't want Richardson to go but he said if Everton would offer the 150 160 million we'd sit down and we'd talk about it because it's it's a business players come players go you have to make profit you have to you know utilize the money that you've got and if you can get 150 million for the player and that can be invested into the squad properly and you can then improve your squad massively and go on and be a Champions League fighting team yourself why would you not entertain that? So he's right in saying we'd have to sit down and talk because Everton would. They wouldn't just totally dismiss it. Um, as well as that, 
I think Richarlison is coming out here in other words and saying, basically, if we don't massively improve, I could be looking at, at potentially seeing a, another football club here because I want to be playing in the Champions League. I deserve to be playing in the Champions League. And he's right. He deserves to be playing at the highest level of football. For me, he is the best Brazilian striker on the planet, not including Neymar as a striker. And he is the best Brazilian currently in the Premier League. Uh, certainly Brazilian forward in the Premier League. He deserves to be playing in the Champions League. He deserves to be fighting for tro trophies. He deserves to be fighting for titles. This, for me, is him basically coming out and saying improve this squad massively and get rid of the shite that's in it. Otherwise, I might have to look at some point and think I'm not further in my career. Not that our Ancelotti and Brands need a wake-up call, but this should be the wake-up call if it's ever needed, as to say, if we don't get our heads in gear here, if we don't sort this out, if we don't get rid of your Sigurdsons and your Delphs and your absolute dross and your Awobies if, uh, if they don't improve and we don't bring in absolute quality players, we're going to lose this lad next year. And I've had enough of Everton in the past turning around and saying, oh, please don't go, please don't go, please don't leave the football club, we love you, we love you, but then on the pitch not making any improvements and keeping the same old dross. Actions speak louder than words, go out, sell the complete shit and bring in real quality and say to Richarlison, there you go, we've brought in players that are good enough to take us to that next level, do you want to be part of that? And I honestly think he'd turn around and say, yeah, I love the football club, I love the fans, I'm happy here, yet I do want to be part of that. But if we just turn around and go, oh, Oh no, please don't go, please don't go, we love you, we love you. And at the end of next season, Richarlison's looking, saying, will Gilfie Sigurdsson still start every week with the captain's armband? Will Tom Davis is still playing near enough every week? Alex Iwobi's done nothing and he's still playing. Theo Walcott's still playing consistently. Are we improving? No. Then, obviously, he's going to look elsewhere because he deserves that. This is on Everton now to improve. Um, what do you think then, mate? That's just my little passionate rant about it. Because, again, I'm not upset with Richarlison for coming out and saying it. And I'm not surprised. And I actually think it needs to be a massive kick up the arse for the football club. Um, what are your thoughts then? What did you think when you read it? And how do you feel about it? Well, you made some amazing points there, mate. You basically said a lot for me. <laughs> um, to be honest, I'm just hoping <laughs> that... A, the, he, he quotes the tweet later and just puts loads of crying faces because yeah. it's been misquoted yeah. a little bit. But on the other hand, what he's saying is right. I mean, this guy is on the tip of star. I mean, he's got superstar written all over him. Yeah. Why should he be playing for a team who's 12th? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's just... He, all We said it last week, didn't he? All these South Americans, when Barca and that come in, they go. Yeah. That's where the... I think that's where the most watched league in their country and stuff. Um, but yeah, we... we like Lukaku, he left. He couldn't see where we were going to improve, could yeah. he? I mean, it is. It, I feel like as fans sometimes as well, we're, we're fed these false promises, and yeah. maybe he's got a, he's got less time than us. Yeah, you know, he's, exactly. His playing career, he's got what another 10, 12, 13 years. He's he's gonna start want to start winning stuff yeah, soon. Exactly. But and if it doesn't improve next year, then I can. What he's saying, I can see him going. Yeah. Um, we've all said along that. Like everyone comes out all the time and goes, oh, he's going to break me out when he leaves. So we all know at some point he's probably going to leave. Um, <coughs> but I, I just think, yeah, everything he said, I can't really, I wouldn't really blame him if he went, put it that way. Yeah, I, um, I agree. And I think, I hope he does give us another year. Like. I think he will. I don't think, again, the, the comments, the bit at the end of it where it says, I think I can hold on for another season as if he's like got a gun to his head. I think that's basically yeah. being misinterpreted to say, I'm, I'm going to stay another season. But, the you know the club needs to prove to players like Richarlison to players like Mason Allgate that we're going in the right direction and we've proved that off the pitch with Carlo Ancelotti coming in and this is again even more why this this summer transfer window is even bigger the, this is the biggest transfer window I've known as an Everton fan because if we do not get this right not only are we going to struggle massively in the league and you know again <clears throat> could be you know, in danger of finishing just slightly above that relegation zone. Again, I don't want to say we're going to be in a battle, but you know what I mean? In and around that sort of area. Not only that, but your Richarlison, your Holgate, you know, your better players, your Deans are going to look next season and go, we don't deserve this. We deserve to be better. And thanks for all your time. And we love Everton. But you, like you said, they've only got a short career. And, you know, Richarlison, as much as we love him and as much as he loves the football club, he hasn't grown up an Everton fan. It's not been a dream all his life to play for Everton. We, he doesn't owe us nothing. 
He's scoring. He's been our you know highest goal scorer for the last two years, near enough. He's been consistent. He's quality. He's scoring goals that no other Everton player has got the ability to score. If he continues that next season, and the club don't prove to him that we're improving, and the club don't prove to him that we actually want to take that step forward and match his ambition, that's what we should be doing. We need to match Richardson's ambition, and I think this starts with the fans as well. And it's nothing to do with the fans, and the fans aren't to blame for this whatsoever. Um. But I've seen a lot of fans when the quote come out saying, oh, that's it, Richarlison's going, where's day he's gone, that's it, he's done, he wants to leave. He doesn't want to leave. What he's saying is that, it basically, what there's two there's two things that he's saying. The business side of it, he's saying, if a big offer come in, we'd sit down and talk, because we would. Whether you like it or not, we would. And the second part of it, he's saying, if we don't, if this club doesn't match my ambition, if we don't improve, I may have to look elsewhere. We should be looking at that now as a fan base, and Everton should be looking at that going, right, that's it. It's easy. It's on a play for us. Improve. Get rid of the shite that he's currently playing with because they're nowhere near good enough. And bring in actual quality players that are good enough to take us forward. If you we can tell on the pitch, you can tell on the pitch that he's just annoyed with some of the exactly. players around him. Him, him and Lucas Dean just look pissed off every game. Exactly. Like, and you can't blame they're, him. Can they're, you? They're, they're the two who put the effort in for me. Like. It, Especially Lucas Dean, to be honest, I think he put does put the effort in every game, but they they're putting the effort in all around the pitch, and it's just they're getting nothing. You know, no one else is, is matching their their effort or their ability, and it just must be fr so frustrating for them. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You are spot on, and you can see that week in week out. You can see Richarlison kicking the floor. You can see Richarlison being annoyed when a pass doesn't go his way. And and you know, uh, Terry's put a comment in saying if you have European level players, then you need to play in Europe. It's the same at all clubs. Spot on. Gemmo says I got Richie doesn't go, but definitely on board with the reasons why though. I mean, Awobi as a winger couldn't do Arsenal, um, but we buy it at a premium. I think, like I said, I've got absolutely no issue with what Richarlison saying, and that's not because I love him and he's a fantastic player, but that's because. For me, Richarlison is effectively coming out and saying, improve or you may lose me. And as fans, we're seeing that now. And as a club, again, even more reasons to why this is the biggest transfer window in um, in the in possibly in, in the club's history, certainly in the recent history, as to why we need to break. We can't be fanning in about saying, oh, well, Gilfie Sigurdsson's you know, passing ratio is, is, is half decent. No, I'm not interested. He doesn't do enough. Same with Tom Davis, same with Alex Iwobi, same with Bernard, same with Theo Walcott. Replace these players, bring in real quality. And if we bring in real quality and if we challenge for Europe next season and Richarlison still says, look, I still want to go, then we've done absolutely everything we can to improve the team and to try and keep him. If we're sitting, in the, sitting here at the end of next season and we've not improved and we're still finishing in and around 12th, 10th and he looks at it and he goes, I've had another 20 goal a season, you know, um, 20, 20 goals a season, season here, I need to look elsewhere. You know, Carlo Ancelotti come out and said that he wants Richarlison to be scoring 30 goals a season. That's all fine and good having those uh, expectations of him and I agree with him. But surely then Richardson is allowed to have expectations of this football club to improve the players that he's playing yeah. with. He ain't scoring 30 goals a season with these players around him. He's, up, he's he's done miracles to score the amount of goals he scored 15 this season, considering the complete lack of creativity. So he is perfectly within his right to come out and say, well, if you want me to score 30 goals, then I need the players to come in and you know help me and assist me to score 30 goals because they're not good enough at the moment. And like I said, obviously... Tony, look at that Lucas, Lucas Dean ball to him. Give him one chance, mate, it's in. Exactly, exactly. And and like I said, I know it caused a little bit of uh, anxiety probably and a little bit of frustration, but I, I completely understand it. I've got nothing against him saying it. And he's right, and it should be a massive wake-up call. Now, we shouldn't turn around and adopt this. Oh, uh, let's roll over and get our belly, belly tickled again and sell him to a bigger club. Again, I wouldn't even entertain the sale of Richarlison unless it was unbelievable amount of money that we physically couldn't turn down but we need to the thing is I don't I don't know if any club will come in this window with that much exactly but if he does <laughs> if he does like you're saying score another 20 or 30 he will next year exactly. definitely exactly um, I think they just might I think I don't know if they're going to risk it in this with, with what's happened with the COVID and yeah. everything and all that this season no, I, but I, if he carries on someone will come in next year I agree 100% 100% spot on and, and you know what mate I, I think if we, we, we've massively improved this season and let's say we finished seventh 
let's say, argument say, we finish seventh, we finish within a European place next season, we bring in a creative midfielder, a, a midfielder that can get about the pitch, box-to-box -box defensive style midfielder, we bring in another winger, we bring in real quality, Richarlison scores 30 goals in Barcelona, or maybe not Barcelona, but Chelsea or United bid £160 million for him. I think Richarlison will look and go, well, you know what, no, we've improved as a football club, the club has proven to me that they want to improve, we've finished in a decent position, we're getting better, I'll stay here. If Richarlison ends on 20 goals next season, but the players around them are also shite and we've finished 11-12 in the league again, why would he not entertain a move? You know, again... I, I still think he might he might entertain a move if we finish, like, top 6-7, but definitely if we finish 11-12 exactly, again, exactly. he's off. Me. He had, he's he'd off. have a right to it, 100%. Um, let's get in the comments then and see what everybody has to say. Jem says, there's too many players in the FC who won't bust a lung or go in for that tackle, uh, that win the ball back. Tack players even not good enough. Uh, get them gone. Um, Thomas Robinson... Go on. Who was it? it was said. No, oh, what two players? Oh, first you said two players. <laughs> um, no tap players, not good enough for me. Uh, too many, oh, yeah, sorry, too many sorry. players. Oh, sorry. um, which is spot on as well, spot on. If you're enjoying the scene, by the way, please do hit that like button. It only takes a second. Thomas says, "Don't think we want to be keeping players imprisoned. If he leaves, we'll want it to be on our terms and not just him running down his contact." But I also can't see him leaving anytime soon. He won't leave this summer. He won't leave this summer again. Again, that that again that sentence. Um, I think I can hold on for another season. He won't leave this summer. He won't. He is effectively saying massively improved, bringing quality, and he knows he won't. Leave, he won't leave because this is the first proper season and the first proper transfer window with Carlo Ancelotti, one of the best managers in world football. If anybody's going to improve this squad, this team, which he loves, this football club, which he loves, it's going to be Carlo Ancelotti. So he'll sit there and he'll say, let me see what the best manager, one of the best managers in the world can do with this squad and with this team. And if it's not enough, then I'll move on. If it is enough, then I'll stay. Um, Teddy says, I prefer all the players... Say, um, no one's leaving anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, he, again, Ancelotti. Yeah, Ancelotti basically said that yeah, fuck, get a fuck. We're, we're, no one's going. 